Folks, what's going on? Air of Carthage here, and I am back in Total War Warhammer 2. If you got a chance to catch it, over the weekend there was an awesome tournament on my channel. I hosted it, but it was casted by Wicked and Happy Puppy. They did all the work to set it up, get everybody in, and cast it. Um, and I really um, liked it. It was a great tournament. I watched as much of it as I could while I was kind of out and about having fun with the family. On the 4th of July, there was a ton of players. It was called the Crumpin' Cup. Uh, had some uh, fantastic artwork, too. <laughs> some army blocker screens that you'll love. Uh, you should go check it out. The video on demand is up on my channel if you want to go watch through it. It's it's a long video, lots of fun watching. What I'm going to do here, though, is cover the finals of the Crumpin' Cup, which was between Reginald Puggington and uh, ODM Chosen One. Two great players that ended up in the finals of this tournament and gave us a, a great series. Now, the final in the tournament is a best of five. Um, I will have a link in the description to the tournament itself in which you can see the rule set um, in case you were wondering, but it is um, a rule set where, you know, I think uh, one player makes a faction pick and bans a couple of others and then the other makes their pick and, you know, you can't reuse factions. Like, there's kind of a rule set like that. I, I won't get into detail on it because I don't know every detail, but um, again, there'll be links. Now, I don't have the replay from Game 1, and I'm not going to tell you what happened in Game 1. Instead, again, there'll be a link in the description to the video on demand with a timestamp. You can go straight to Game 1 and watch what happened in Game 1. It was a really cool match. And what we're going to do here is pick up from Game 2, and once I'm done casting Game 2, I'll be able to talk about the results of Game 1 and game two. That way you don't know what's happened yet, and I haven't ruined any surprises if you haven't seen it. All right, so here we are loading in to game two. Again, game one, check the link. You can see the builds here. Um, this is going to be a vampire counts versus dark elves, and chosen one has taken a build um, that's going to be very interesting. Um, and Puggington, uh, for those who don't know, ha happens to be a really fantastic player with the vampires. It's probably one of his stronger factions, so I heard um, during the broadcast, not because I know by a ton of personal experience, though I have seen him play vampires before, and he did well. And uh, let's check out these builds real quick. I'm going to slow it down for just a second because action's going to get crazy fast. We do have a Lamian Vampire Lord here on the Zombie Dragon, just to make sure you all know. Um, we've got this Seduction here, which is a big debuff um, around herself. And then we've got Lightning Reflexes, which is going to buff. And then um, Scepter of Stability for Magic Resistance, Penumbral Pendulum. Uh, raise the dead, invocation into heck. Um, so here is what you've got for your Lamian Lord. And then as far as other picks, there are a unit of fell bats on either flank. The Devils of Swartzhafen, which is a um, Vargeist unit, and then we got a Terrorgeist. On the ground, there's a bunch of zombies. In the back, we have Skelly Warriors, and they are supported by Black Knights with Lances and Barding. These guys don't always get used, but they have solid armor and really good charge bonus. So it's a good unit. And then there's another one on the other side. So... The two units of Black Knights uh, with Lances and Barding. And as for the Dark Elf Army, they just have a few Spear units back here. Uh, four in total, actually, set up in a box. And then up in the air, they have an insane Air Force. It's going to be the Crows of Cain Harpies. So, yeah, these are going to be absolutely nuts. You can see here that they regenerate when they're in melee. And then we've got um, Malekith here, and he is on Seraphon. And the key things to notice here, he's got the Gaze of Maleths, which is good against Blobs. And then he's also got Soul Stealer, which also actually happens to be good against Blobs, uh, and Word of Pain. But Soul Stealer, more specifically, will heal him while hurting. Uh, hopefully an enemy Lord is where it gets cast. There's a Black Dragon right behind him, beyond just Seraphon. And not only that, <laughs> yes, there's more, folks. There's a couple of uh, Druki Master units here, and they are both on their Dark Pegasus. Both of these, remember, are armor-piercing, anti-large, and they have the Guardian trait. Um, and then he's also got a potion of strength on them, so they'll do even more weapon damage. Now, Guardian means when they're fighting around Malekith, or I, I think the uh, Black Dragon, too. I can't remember if Guardian... Oh, it's a lord or hero, so it won't work on the Black Dragon, but it will work on Malekith and the other uh, master. So let's hit play and let this fight play out. Obviously, here at first, there's going to be uh, a really dangerous situation for Puggington and his vampires. If he gets caught in melee early on here, he is dead. Like, his leadership is going to get absolutely shot. And so he is avoiding melee at all costs. Though, you can see these master units over here do catch him. And they are doing some damage. He's going to use a Felbat to try and block and keep these units off of him. 
and he does a very masterful job of it, all things considered. Yes, he is taking some damage, but remember that this could very quickly be the death of his lord, especially if he gets in here, gets in attack, uh, gets attacked, and starts getting hit by a soul stealer. So you can see that, unfortunately for Pugginton, the vampires are very slow. Uh, this is a Sternsman I missed earlier. Uh, they are headed towards the um, the uh, spear uh, blob over there, spear uh, square, I should say. And um, you can see Pugginton just running for his life here as he's trying to get away from these two units. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy what he's going to have to deal with here. Look at this. Um, the uh, Malekith actually shot a breath attack, I think, at the Devils of Swartzhofen, which didn't really land. And you can see a charge in the front and a charge from behind between the Devils and the Black Knights trying to break one of the Dread Spears. Pugginton is clearly, at this point, um, going to make a desperate bid to break the ground units and force the Flyers to land. Now, the way these tournaments work, if there's no more units on the ground, um, a single entity monster, not a single entity, um, when a single entity monster dives down to attack from the air, again, if there's no ground units, then that unit has to stay down um, and stay in the fight. It's uh, one of the rules they've set up in order to uh, lessen the cycle charging cheese that you could get at the end of a game. And so Pugginton is in a, like I said, a just absolutely desperate bid here to get rid of the Spearman. But it's going to take a long time for his infantry to even get here. And you can see his Lamian Lord is down to 50% health already and now under 50% and gets caught in a dangerous melee here. And so we're going to see the dragon dive out of the air down to the ground trying to use some zombies or other units as a screen. And that actually does cause a terror out just briefly amongst the spears, but that's huge for Pugginton. And you can see here, a very nice job. He's shielding his dragon, running through his own units, and kind of getting all the other units off of him. Look at this gaze of malice here. Beautiful play by Chosen One, damaging up a blob. So he's going to be able to get a lot of work done. Another breath attack coming in. Uh, doesn't do a ton, but it does land on some of the Black Knights. And remember here that if, if Chosen One can get rid of some of the key units for the vampires, and this is going to be over real quick because these uh, single entities definitely have the power to get rid of the rest of these cheap vampire units. Look at Soul Stealer coming down, and the Lamian Lord tries hard to get away from it, but once Soul Stealer hits, it continues, despite whether being in the circle, I believe. And so the Lamian Lord is in huge trouble here. She dives down once again, maybe looking for cover from the Black Knights, and just very, very close to death here. Look at this, 500 hit points, crumbling extremely dangerous situation for Pugginton here. The game is literally on a knife's edge right now. <laughs> extremely, extremely close. In fact, you can see the power bar in favor of Chosen One. The Lombian Lord's going to get back in the air, drop a breath attack onto the key units of the Dark Elves, and then immediately flee away and try and stay alive. But look at this. There's crumbling, critical binding on the Lombian Lord. So she has to get away from this fight in a big, big hurry. Look at this. You can see there are a few spear units back here. We'll see whether they route before they get to the edge of the map or whether they're going to be gone. There is a uh, shattered, or sorry, a broken spear unit in the middle of the fight. Um, but again, if all the spear units are gone, it's going to change. Yeah, this one actually came back right by the edge of the map. That is really difficult for Pugginton. And you can see here that, um, yeah, Malekith and his black dragon have caught the devils of Swartzhofen. And they are going to be fighting them out of the air. I don't want to stay in cinematic mode because I think you all need to be able to see the health bars and what's going on, but I may cut that um, display, or sorry, the information panel out every now and then. Casting tournament battles to me is, is always probably slightly different than casting more of a uh, just social match where, you know, we're looking for views. And this one, I think it's important for you all to know how the fight is going at any given point. There's another Gaze of Malice there. You're going to see another Breath Attack, I believe, coming in from Malak. Well, it looked like he was wheeling it up, but he doesn't. Or, sorry, that's just the Black Dragon. Malekith's here. So there was some healing on the Lamian Lord, and uh, she is now, uh, you know, looking a little better here. You can see only 1,170 hit points, though. Malekith is in fantastic shape. And at this point, you can see the uh, Vampire Infantry is going to be able to try and spread out a little and get rid of the rest of these spears, but a lot of the Vampire units do have to be careful. This Black Knight with Lances and Barding is going to have to try and get away from the Black Dragon and this Druki Master. Um, so they can stay alive. Units like this are going to be critical for trying to get rid of the few remaining spearmen. Because at this point, um, there's nothing forcing the flyers to land. Look at this, the Terrorgeist. 
fleeing for its life in the face of this master. Look at the uh, stats on this master right now with the Potion of Strength, the Deadly Onslaught. It is seriously strong. And uh, they land a lot of their hits. <laughs> they land a lot of their hits. They are dangerous units. I like using the, uh, the, the master unit to support Marathi. Um, I've done this quite a bit where I'll have Marathi and, you know, a couple of Druki Masters following her around, and it is just brutal because of her debuffs and then their good anti-large bonus. Uh, you don't have a lot of uh, mass whenever you do that, but, you know, just a good example of how dangerous this can be. Now, of course, Malekith has a lot more um, melee competency than Marathi. Look at this. Just desperate situation out here for the Lamian Lord. I'm going to cover this at the moment. You can see uh, the Lamian Lord uses the Scepter of Stability, just I don't know if it's going to help or not. Uh, probably it's a, it's, a, it's a chance to try and resist um, any damage coming in from uh, Soul Stealer potentially. But uh, we've got uh, the abilities going off here. The Terror Geist gets stuck in a fight, um, but now is going to flee away. You can see the Devil's trying to catch the Master and keep him off the Lamian Lord. And over here... The Black Dragon has engaged in combat, and the last Spear unit was killed, which means this Black Dragon now has to stay in combat. It can't cycle charge. You can see the power bar actually still slightly in favor of Odium Chosen One. And here comes uh, Pugginton, the Lamian Lord, diving into battle against the Black Dragon, but then quickly followed up by the Master, and you can see Malekith on his way. He drops a Soul Stealer, and uh, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, here comes a Breath Attack as well. It's going to kill a decent number. Yeah, that killed a whole bunch of uh, vampire troops there on the ground. It's Malekith, uh, last time I looked, didn't have a ton of kills. He does now. Uh, the Black Dragon uh, has 91 kills, and it's still fighting away. You can see that this Master Unit is now stuck in combat on the ground, and the other one gets caught in the air by the Terrorgeist and the Vargeist, and they manage to get rid of it. I say that these units have to stay on the ground. Um, I think that one of them has to stay on the ground. I, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not 100% certain if I remember that rule. I, I know at least one of them does, and maybe all of them, once that they've landed, that have to stay on the ground. I'll, I'm sure I'll have someone remind me in the comments. We'll see, I mean, if, if Chosen One doesn't take back off with Malekith here, we'll know that he has to stay grounded, otherwise, I mean, one would take back off here and avoid having to, uh, to be charged. I'm going to assume at this point that they have to stay on the ground. And you can see the power bar is still fairly balanced, but uh, now the Terror Geist is feeling pretty healthy. Going to use a Breath Attack to try and keep the Black Dragon from returning. And the Lamian Lord has 1,600 hit points now, and is just going to fly around and let her Chaff do the fighting here. And that is not a bad choice at all. This is where vampires are going to let their uh, let their Chaff do their work for them. But, I mean, Malekith is going to be able to get significant kills. This... This vampire chap is not a real big threat to him. And because there are units on the ground, the Lamian Lord does not have to stay grounded. So those rules are definitely going to help the Lamian Lord. There's a final Soul Stealer. Malekith is going to be getting some much needed head, uh, hit points here. And uh, he's not able to catch the Lamian Lord and engage in that fight. He's going to have to stay down here and continue to fight. You can see this uh, master unit took off over here. Comes the Lamian Lord. It looks like we'll yep breath, breath attack on Malekith, and it's a pretty good hit. That is a pretty solid hit. See Malekith now down to 4,200 hit points. Look at that, 370 kills. He is just tanking this melee here, absolutely tanking it. The Master Unit came back, and no doubt we'll be chasing the Lamian Lord in the air now, um, while Malekith has to stay on the ground and fight. And honestly, Malekith is he's tanking it down here. He's doing a fantastic job. Really fantastic job. Ooh, this is going to be close here. Oof. 1632. No more healing for the Lamian Lord. I'm going to leave this panel up now so you all can see some of this. And then we've got, what, 751 hit points here. Oh, big hit there. Lost about 300 hit points. You can see the Terror Guys coming in, attempting to put an end to this. Oh, another big hit. Yikes. Down to 1041. So this is like two hits for 300 hit points each. But then the Master took a big hit from the Terror Geist and is now trying to break away, but swings back around for another attack, and the Lamian Lord's down to 762. 452. Oh my gosh, this is close. Oh, terrified. Look at that, 113, 105, 101, crumbling. 
Oh no. Yeah, the Lamian Lord was crumbling. 93 hit points, critical binding. The Terror Geist barely saved that one. And now you can see the power bar actually swinging slightly in favor of Pugginton. Holy cow, that was close. That was so close. <laughs> Insane close. Here we go. We got the uh, the Lombian Lord and the Terror Geist now turning around the uh, Master off the field. Look at this. 430 kills for Malekith. What a brute. And I would imagine that the Lamian Lord is just going to stay well away from the fight. Remember, Malekith is not allowed to get back in the air because of the rule set. That's going to give the Terror Geist a free charge on Malekith. And a breath attack here, which doesn't do a lot. Probably killed more chaff than it hurt Malekith. But hey, you do what you can. And it did hurt the power or the uh, leadership of Malekith, if nothing else. The question is, will the vampires charge straight in? Yep, they will. I think they're going to go in while there's still chaff here to support the Terror Geist, which is probably a good call. Because Malekith is a pretty potent rival. Now, remember, a Vampire Terror Geist does have anti-large and armor piercing. Uh, that's not always the case with the... Um, I, I think the uh, Vampire Coast one lacks one of those, if I remember right. It's been a while, but I'm pretty sure that it's slightly different. You can see Malekith is going to lose this fight. The Lamian Lords was about to come in, maybe for one charge, that I can't tell, maybe not. But a uh, very close victory, and a well-earned victory for Pugginton. And uh, that's going to be the end of Game 2. Now, Game 1, if you haven't watched it yet, pause this video right now, because I'm about to say what happened in Game 1. <laughs> Go check the link in the description with the timestamp, okay? In Game 1, um, it was actually a... Um, a matchup of High Elves versus Empire, and Pugginton lost that one with his Volkmar the Grim. It was a very epic showdown at the very end. You need to go watch it if you haven't watched it. Um, and I gave you plenty of chances to not have it ruined. So we're now standing at 1-1 in a series of five in these finals, and just fantastic play from both players there. Uh, I mean, I really enjoyed this one. It was an extremely close game. What a small army here by Chosen One, and it also means you have very little room for mistakes. And he did a dang good job of chasing this stuff, and really the only reason why this didn't work out for him, I mean, Pugginton just was insistent about running. There would have been points at this battle where I think I would have just kind of quit and said, what am I supposed to do about this? I just got outpicked, and I probably would have allowed my Vampire Lord to just fight. Um, and thinking that you can't get away. And, and Pugginton didn't really get away. He took a ton of hits trying to get away from Malekith's goon squad in the air, and he just took so much damage that it felt like that he couldn't possibly win the battle, but it was really just determined. He stayed at it, right? He just kept going, kept trying, wouldn't give up, kept fighting, and it worked in the end. So Pugginton won, and uh, Chosen won, I mean, I felt like overall did a pretty fantastic job of this battle. Yeah, he didn't win this one, um, but it was, a, it was a very interesting pick to go against vampires, and uh, basically... He had all the tools to get rid of some of their key units very, very quickly. And I think that a few things helped save Pugginton here. One, he had a very large and spread out army. Um, and this made it, um, it made it, gave him time to kind of get together. Now, in the beginning, being spread out was actually a bad thing because it was leaving his Lamian lords um, singled out up in the air. Uh, but his infantry was able to move up, um, get in there, get some work done. And if he hadn't brought so many different units um, on the ground, he may not have been able to win this one. It was just uh, very interesting to see this battle. Again, I don't play in these 1v1 uh, tournaments as far as like head-to-head -head games, so I don't have tons of experience with this, but I do have a lot of experience in the game, and I love seeing these matches. Uh, even though I can't necessarily always pick and play these things the same as these players do, I understand it, and it's, it's a heck of a lot of fun to see them do it and see how they play. So anyway, we're at uh, a 1-1 tie so far after game one and two. Again, remember, check that link in the description if you want to see Game 1. And uh, we're going to move on at this point to uh, Game 3 and see what happens now that we've started off 1-1. One